There are a lot of factors along the way that determines the kind of grip a basketball shoe has, and it's definitely not all in the rubber. So with the Adidas Adazero Selects, there, there's just a lot about them that produce the grip that they can give you both indoors and outdoors, but it really has to do with the shoe in general. So let's get into it. Now, one thing about the Adazero Selects that, that took me kind of a while to get my head wrapped around was the uppers because the uppers do feel decently light for a shoe that, that is a little bit more maximalist. It is a ton of padding. You get big bunting around the ankle collar, a really nice sucked in feel around your ankle and heel. But as you go into the forefoot, it, it definitely doesn't feel like a really clunky, really weighted down shoe. And if you look at just the outer layer of the Selects, especially under the microscope, you'll see you get two distinct layers and two distinct styles of braiding. One is just a straight fiber and then cross out of the braid. And then underneath of that, the white layer is all one big braided mesh. Now that is actually two layers of meshing. One is the outside, just a really thin blue layer. Then on the inside, that other meshing layer is actually attached to a bunting layer underneath of it. Now, if you look at the breathability test of the Selects, they only heated up 113.5 degrees and then cooled down 51.4 degrees. The interesting thing was when I was putting my hand over top of the uppers to see where the heat was coming out, where it was actually, you know, breathing through the shoe, I could not feel really one place in the shoe where air was coming out. But yet my hand on the uppers, even when the heat gun was in there, was cool to the touch on the uppers and they didn't heat up all that much. It wasn't until I cut them open that I really saw why that was happening. You know, number one, a bright white material will reflect a little bit more heat. But number two, the thickness of the padding and how porous that padding is underneath it, I think it's, that's the bigger reason is how, how porous that padding is, really just kind of allowed the heat to kind of get into that pad. And then I noticed 30, 45, 60 seconds after I did it, when I put my hand on there, that's when the outside started to feel warm and that's when that heat started radiating out of it. So it's not so much that there's a ton of breathability in these because there, there isn't much. It's just that it handles heat so well that you're getting a ton of containment in the shoe and a ton of lockdown, a really comfortable padded feel, but also a really good way to deal with heat. And we look at the lace line, you'll see number one, there is an elastic band here right in the distal midfoot going into the forefoot. We'll talk about that when we get to the fifth section that there are some pitfalls to that. And the lace eyelets are outrigger. However, they are sewn into this really thick felt bunting right underneath of there and those lace eyelets go all the way down into the stitching right underneath of it so you actually do get a little bit more surface area when you tie these down so the lockdown is a lot better on these outriggers than they are on a lot of other outriggers i've seen especially in the more maximalist basketball shoe space and on the upper durability test 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper that black toe drag guard or mud guard is a lot stronger than you think it is the burr does get through it but just barely and does not make any impression on the blue woven layer under underneath of it. So that is really nice. Plus the tip of the toe here does have an actual rubber toe drag guard and rubber mud guard. But honestly, for someone that drags and slides, this is still really good. And getting into the midsole teardown, I thought this was going to kind of be just a rinse and repeat, just full bed of light strike. However, when you actually feel the light strike on foot, when you actually feel it with your hand, a lot different. It is a very pillowy light strike, almost feels like an EVA ETPU blended light strike. Now remember, a light strike comes in a lot of different forms. Light strike isn't just one foam, it is a way that they foam the shoe. There is light strike, which is ETPU, there is light strike EVA, which is a really light form of EVA, and there is light strike pro, which is kind of like their PEBA or nylon type, like super shoe type foam. Whereas this, they just say it's a full bed of light strike foam, but really pillowy, really light feeling underneath, or really plush feeling underneath light strike. So that was a really pleasant surprise. However, the bigger surprise was the shank. And you wouldn't think you could be surprised because you can just see it right here. You know, you get the heel going all the way into these two leaflets and the forefoot with those little springboard plates. However, look how thick the shank is underneath the arts of the shoe. This thing is crazy. So much stress shielding from the bottom of your foot. Now, that's going to have some implications for break in, which we'll talk about later in the video. But if you look at the single leg jump height test, got 19 centimeters on these, which is really good for a more maximalist basketball shoe. And then if you look at the bounce height test, got 30 and a half centimeters in the heel, 20 and a half centimeters in the forefoot, which is kind of right there in the mix with, with most light strike products. The one thing I did notice that was a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde about the shoe is that its ease of jumping, especially on the single leg after a little bit of break in, is a lot better than it's just kind of natural 
bounce capabilities in terms of the foam. So the ergonomics and biomechanics, these a little bit better versus just the raw materials in terms of bounce and jump. But like I said, there are some caveats to that once we get to the fifth section. And getting into the all important outsole tread of the Adazero Selects, you would have thought by the title of this video, as well as my introduction to this video, that there'd be some really revolutionary design in the outsole tread. However, it's just a dual rubber compound herringbone pattern. It's just the formulation of the rubber, shape of the shoe, a lot of things in the midsole and the uppers that make this rubber be able to perform so well. For initial grip and initial stability, this has been best rubber I've put on, even equal to the Way of Wade 8082 Ultra V2. Uh, these were right in line with that, but just a little bit more stable. Now, after about an hour, this rubber did start to pick up a little bit of dust. However, it didn't really affect the grip and it was very easy just to get off. And as soon as I wiped it off for maybe I don't know, half a second, it went back to that super elite gripping. And I don't really put a lot of stock into the squeak or the, the sound that the shoe makes on the floor because I've seen a lot of shoes that can't grip for anything make super loud screeching noise. Uh, however, with these, can't deny, I mean, they were like a velociraptor on the court. Like everyone that was around there kind of stopped and looked at me when I was doing that test because it's so loud. But it's just also the crazy grip, not only on indoor hardwood, but also on outdoor asphalt and concrete. Just the blend of the rubber, it just really has something for both surfaces. Now also because of the shape of this outsole and because it is rolled rubber and a continuous tread pattern, but that continuous pattern does start to get pretty narrow here in the midfoot. They're also not super clunky, right? And because they have just enough cutouts here kind of in the more lateral proximal forefoot as well here right under the big toe joint they also do break in nice after a while and give you a nice kind of bending action underneath your foot but it's not just the rubber that produces all of that grip that these give you it's also how thick the shank is and just how substantial is underneath your foot that keep the shoe so centered underneath of you now, they almost feel like the ag3 from 361 but much more nimble of a shoe but then also because the light strike is just a little bit more pillowy you're allowed to kind of feel the ground a little bit even though that shank is underneath of you that's also another big reason why these, these grip so well and if you look at the outsole durability test 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper almost a millimeter of damage on the clear rubber and, and a millimeter of damage on the dyed rubber and that also correlates their durometer readings this isn't the hardest rubber compound out there it's hard enough that the durability is still decent but it's that kind of sweet spot mixture right there of kind of grip but also durability i think that gives them that that great profile as well but getting into the fit of the selects this is the biggest pitfall i think to these number one a narrow medium and wide foot can just go true to size these lock down really well you can get an orthotic in these really easily however that elastic band on them does make them a little bit more narrow for somebody with a wider midfoot. I know with me, I started to get a little bit of cramping in my left foot in these in my standard size. Now I basically just had to, you know, pull and tug at the elastic and it went away. But this is one of the few Adidas basketball shoes recently that I've seen that, that is a little bit more constrictive in the midfoot. So that's a little bit more break-in. The next thing is, is the break-in of the shank of these shoes because it is so thick does take a little bit of time. I noticed when I first put them on, I said, you know, these really aren't a jumper shoe. They're really stable, great grip, everything like that that I said, but they're not really for like getting up into the air. However, after about an hour or two, a couple sessions in these, that's when that shank really started to come alive. And that's when it started to bend enough and give me a, just enough mobility in them that I was able to use kind of the reverb of the shank and the full length leaflets as a springboard, but that it wasn't so stiff because at the beginning, basically the shoe just wanted to stay straight. It did not want to bend. It immediately wanted to go back to just being like kind of like a flat board type shoe. And I thought, eh. but once it does break in, that's when you start to see those good jump heights. That's when you start to see that easy rolling and that easy getting off the ground. So it's got to give them a little bit of time, but they do break in. And in terms of the playability, the selects best players, these really are an all court type shoe. These can be used from anybody from a center to a wing, you know, point or shooting guard if you want something a little bit more maximalist because there is so much padding around your ankle, around your heel, you know, periphery, your rear foot. Um, they are really good to kind of do battle in the paint with it. They are going to give you a little bit more protection. Like I said, because the grip is so good and once they break, in, they do become a lot more nimble. You can outwork somebody on the ground. And once the shank breaks in, you can get off the ground pretty easily as well. They play just as well indoors as they do outdoors. So they really are kind of like an all encompassing shoe. You just have to want a little bit more maximal padding around you. Like I said, it doesn't feel bad, doesn't feel bogged down, but it is still a, a maximalist shoe. And you know, Adidas does advertise this as a very light shoe. To me, it's light for a more maximalist shoe. It, it's not like the Curry Flow 10 for sure, but for its category and class of 
of shoes. Yeah, just with the engineering of it, they definitely feel pretty light. Like I said, once they break in at first, just like I said, give them some time to break in and then you'll notice that they do start to feel a little bit more kind of light underfoot for you. So, um, you know, I would love to know if you're picking up a pair of these because I think for me, this would kind of be something that I would be more interested in because like I said, they protect your foot really well kind of from all angles as well as that they give you just a little bit of something underneath of you and the comfort is really there from that little bit of thicker, more pillowy light strike in there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, especially if you've gotten them, if you had the same profile of grip that I got out of these, kind of that really elite feeling. I'd love to know kind of your experiences versus mine. So let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see another sibling to the Adidas Ad Zero Select, the Adidas Dawn Issue 4, one of the best shoes of 2020 that's gone completely under the radar until he dropped, what, 71 points in them. Make sure you click in this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next one.